Hi thinkers, welcome to the object oriented design course on Thinkix Academy. In the previous video, we have already covered the single responsibility principle and now we are going to cover the O part of the solid principles which is the open close principle. Uh, it is a very important principle to learn and it will help us in uh, studying some more patterns in the later of this course. So let's start with a very simple example. So in the previous video, we have already covered the single responsibility principle which states that if you have a class shape, we are taking the same example for easiness. So we have this class shape and this class shape has a simple draw function, right? And since it has only one function, it means that the class has only single responsibility. Now we have a class area, which is to calculate the area and it is a different class. So it means that we have a different class to be able to calculate the area. So yes, we are following the single responsibility principle. Now let's consider a situation. So uh, the way I'm going to teach you this important concept, this principle is I'm going to give you a scenario, right? So we'll start with a real life scenario and then we will see how this uh, open close principle will help us in writing a code which is more maintainable or reusable, right? So uh, let's say that you are uh, hired uh, in a company which is actually uh, making some drawing software, right? So the company makes drawing software, so you are hired for the purpose of software development. So the project manager comes to you, he shows you this code that yes, this is the code we are using. And now the project manager comes to you and he says that you should, uh, you will have to implement uh, the drawing function, which has the ability to draw more than one shape, right? So let's say initially this draw function was not implemented and now the client has some more requirements. The client wants you to implement the draw function in such a way that it will be able to draw a circle, maybe a rectangle and let's say a sphere also, right? So client has different requirements. So you as a software developer, you want to uh, implement this draw function in such a way that you will be able to draw uh, on the basis of the user selection. So if the user selects to draw a circle, this draw function will draw the circle, right? If the user selection says draw a rectangle, then this draw function will draw a rectangle, right? So a very simple uh, understanding of this scenario. Now there are two ways to do this, right? I'm going to tell you both the ways, but you will have to tell me which approach is better, right? I'm going to tell you two approaches and in the comments below, you will have to just tell me which one do you think is better and why do you think it is better? So in the, in the interviews also, you will be asked such type of situations. You will be given scenarios and you will be asked questions related to the design pattern uh, in a similar approach that we are doing, right? So let me know in the comments, there are a lot of advantages and disadvantages of uh, the approaches that we're going to discuss, right? So let's first discuss the approach one. So as a software developer, I come into the company and I see that there's a draw function. So what I will do is I'll say that, okay, it's fine. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pass the shape to this draw function as a parameter, right? So I'm going to draw shape, let's say SH, or let's say the name of the shape, right? So what I'm essentially doing is I'm using approach one, right? So this is actually approach one. Right. So approach one is simple. I will pass the name of the shape, whether it be circle, rectangle or a sphere using this parameter name and I'm going to pass it and I'm just going to simply write a switch case or a if else case. So I can write if, if the name of the shape, right? So I can say that if shape, right? Or let's say if name is equals to equals to circle, then what I'm going to do the, the, in this case, in this case, I'm going to draw the circle, right? So a very simple implementation, if I have more shapes like rectangle, I can create one more if else case and I can say that, okay, if the name is equals to equals to rectangle, right? If name is rectangle, I'm going to draw a rectangle here. This is the first approach and uh, this approach is actually to use if else cases by passing the parameter name. And then what you can do is you can uh, draw the circles on the basis of the choices. So it is a uh, on the basis of choice based. So this is approach one and uh, let's discuss the approach two. And then you will have to tell me in the comments, which approach do you think is better? And then we will discuss that this open close principle is following which approach, right? And then we will understand which one is better and why open close principle uses that certain approach, right? So this was the first approach. And now I'm going to uh, just rub this part, right? So I'm just going to remove this whole part here. And now, now let's discuss the second approach. The second approach is again, uh, very simple, uh, the software developer, you're hired as a software developer and you say that, you know what, I'm not going to use this approach. Uh, I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to extend this shape class. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to 
just remove this part. So just focus on this shape class, right? I'm going to put it in a box here. So what I will do is I will just simply create another class circle, right? And this class circle is going to extend the shape class, right? So this class circle extends the shape class. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to override the function draw here, right? So I'm going to write public void draw function here. So you can see this is uh, the approach to. So here I'm going to write that this one is approach number two. So the approach to says that we are going to use inheritance. And what I will do is I will extend the shape class and I will override this draw function. So I'm going to write a comment here that I am trying to override the draw function. Now we know that if we want to override this draw function, we can actually uh, just call this function draw for the circle object and we will be able to draw a circle. Similarly, if I want to draw a rectangle, I will create another class, class rectangle, extends shape and we are going to create and override the draw function, right? So this is a combination of two things, inheritance and polymorphism. So what type of polymorphism is used? There are two types of polymorphism, runtime and compile time. We, we are here using the runtime uh, polymorphism, which is uh, the overriding and in compile time, we know it's uh, overloading, right? So how do we uh, call the function of the draw class? That is the question. The answer to that is very simple. Just create a reference to the shape class, but create an object of this circle class, right? So new circle. So if you will call sh.draw function, you can see I'm using shape.draw function, right? So the draw function of shape class should be called, but since it is an object of circle class, this draw function gets overridden and this function will be called. So in this fashion, I can create shape sh equals to new circle. Then I can create shape. Let's say there is a second shape, which is a new rectangle. And similarly, if I want to draw a rectangle, I can say shape to dot draw. Right. So similarly, we can implement these and this is the approach to which of these approaches using the choice based system or using the inheritance, which one do you think is better? Now, let's see uh, which approach this open close principle uses. Right. So the open close principle uses the uh, this second approach and it uh, disregards this approach one. Right. Approach one uh, I'm going to write is a violation of the open close principle. So I'm going to mark it in a red box. So red box means that approach one is a violation, right? So what is the uh, definition of open close principle? I'm going to write in very simple terms here that open close principle says that a class or the modules of a class, right? So you can see that draw is a module of the class. So the modules of class, right? Or we can say the modules of the application are closed for modification, right? So are closed for modification which means that if I've created a module, which is the draw function, I will not, uh, I'm not allowed to modify that draw function. So we know that if I want to create a new rectangle, I will have to write another if case, right? It means I'm trying to modify this draw function, which is not, uh, which is a violation of the open close principle. We will see what are the advantages of that. So modules of the application are closed for modification, but there is open also. So here it says, but it is open for it is open for the second approach, which is extension, right? Extension, right? So in simple words, our modules of a class, right? I'm going to summarize it that if I have a lot of function, uh, a function inside of a class, it is closed for modification. We are not allowed to modify it. But the question uh, comes up, which is if the client has multiple requirements, if the client wants to draw a circle or a rectangle, and if we don't have the ability to modify that, then how we're going to modify, right? The answer to that is it is open for extension, which means we can extend a new class, which will be a subclass. So we can extend a subclass and we can do that. The question is why? Why do you think using approach two is better? Why do you think open close principle is better than this first approach, right? The answer to that question is code maintainability issues, right? So uh, let's say I have a code, which is the draw function and a lot of else, if else cases are here, it becomes difficult for the new software developers that will be hired in the company. It will become very difficult for them to see which case is actually the right case, right? Which module is the right module 
and uh, in, in the draw function you will see, see that there are there is a big algorithm for the for drawing a circle there is a big algorithm for drawing a rectangle so there are huge code and this class will keep increasing and it will become a lot of code in just a single class so if you want a software developer to draw a circle to write an algorithm to draw a circle you will have to give him this whole class if you give him the whole class he will have to manually find where the uh, if else case is and then modifying it becomes very difficult right the concept is we are actually using modularization modularization means we are actually uh, making the code this draw function independently in a different in a separate module and this is similar to what we can think of as a microservice right so what we are doing it we are creating another uh, this code so if I want to give a software developer uh, algorithm to write to draw a circle, I just I will just give him this class. I don't need to show him all the algorithms for different section because it may happen that in a class there may be some crucial data that we don't want to show the other developers, right? So we want them to work different uh, independently. So we can just give him the class share this class circle, which is a subclass. And if we give the subclass to the software developer, he knows that this is the code that I want to write, right? And he will push that code here and that will be actually implemented. So code maintainability is a very important uh, issue that was arising when we were using approach one. Open close principle uh, is actually disregarding this approach one due to this reason only. So that's the open close principle. There are more and more reasons why this approach one is has some more disadvantages if you are getting some more disadvantages let me know in the comments of this video it will be very helpful i will also learn something new if you know about this so that's all for this tutorial in the next tutorial we will study very important principle list of substitution right we'll study it in the next tutorial so we'll see you in the next tutorial thanks for watching